Okay, so now for this video, we are going to talk about domain and range. So we can just describe functions like we learned this past week by their domain, which is all x values. So if you remember my input, and by their range, which is all of their y values, or again, that was my output. And so we're going to be looking at finding the domain and range of these functions represented by their graph. And so, remember since my domain, or my x on the graph, that is my horizontal line, so everything left to right. So when I'm finding my domain, I'm looking to see how far left, left slash right it goes. And then when I'm finding my range, I am looking to see how far up and down. It goes. And that's going to be for all of my graphs that are connected like we see here. Otherwise, if it's just points, we're just going to be listing all of our x's and all of our y's. So let's go ahead and look at that first example. So I want to list out my domain first. And so normally when we're listing just a set of numbers, we put this curly brace out in front. And so I'm going to list all of my x values on all of these points. So something that may be helpful is to first just label your points. So I see here this is negative 3, negative 2. I remember when we were labeling points that you put the x value first. This one's at negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then 3, 4. And so my domain is going to be all the x values. So it's all the first coordinate of all of these. So that's negative 3, negative 1, 1, and then 3. And then my range, that's going to be all my y values. So that's going to be the second coordinate. So that's going to be negative 2, 0, 2, and then 4. So remember, again, that all coordinates are listed with the x first and y second. Okay, so if you have a graph that's just points, that is how you're going to find your domain and range. But now let's look at this next one. This one's all connected. And so this isn't just a list of points for this function. I am really seeing all like an infinite amount of points throughout here because I have all along that line. So it would not be possible just to list every x that's there because I'll have tons that are just between this negative 1 to 2 because I, I think of all the fractions. So for these, we instead write a compound inequality just like what we did in this first video. So for my domain, That is going to be all my x values. So I'm going to see for this, like I kind of set up here, how far left and how far right it goes. So I'm looking to see what's the furthest left this graph goes. Well, it's going to be right here. So that is at negative 2. And again, I'm writing a compound inequality here. So I need that and that. And then I'm going to see how far right it goes. Well, I see the furthest right this, gra this graph goes is at 3. And then now I'm going to check my endpoints. And so I see that this is a filled in circle, so I need a line underneath this inequality. And this is also a filled in circle, so I need a line underneath that inequality. Okay, so now let's look at the range. So now, just like we did in that first video, we're looking at all the y values. Because again, my range is all y values. 
And so I'm looking to see how far up and how far down it goes. I'm going to start with, so I'm going to put my inequality symbols first, and I'm going to start with how far down it goes, since that's going to be my furthest left number, because I want my smallest number here. Well, I see the lowest this graph goes is here, so that's going to be at negative 1. And the highest it goes is at here, and so that's going to be at 2. So for those connected graphs, you're going to need to use our compound inequalities that we learned about on Monday, because there's really a whole range of points that are in that graph because it's all connected. For individual points, you're just going to list the x's and y's. So go ahead and pause the video. I want you to try these next two on your own. Okay, so these are the answers you should have gotten. For number three, this was just points, so I just needed to list my x and y values. If you notice when I'm writing these, I always put the smallest number first, and then I just go up until I get to the biggest number. And then also for y, this one was a little interesting because I had some repeating numbers. You don't have to write those repeats, so I didn't need to write 2, 2, and then 4, 4. You can just go ahead and just write it once. So if there's any repeating, you can just write that number once. Okay, and then for this next one, this was this graph was connected, so I needed to write my compound inequalities here. The furthest left my graph went was at 1, and then the furthest right my graph went was at 5. The lowest point in my graph was 0, and the highest point in my graph was 4. And since both of these were closed circles, all of these had lines underneath it. So again, just to recap, your range is all your y values, your domain is all of your x values. If they're connected, you need to use a compound inequality, and make sure you put x for your domain, y for your range. The domain is how far left to how far right the graph goes. Range is the lowest point of the graph to the highest point of the graph. Okay, that's all for this video. We'll go on to the next one to learn about independent and dependent variables.